Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to continue the topic of discussion from our earlier video which was about gas solid separation. We have already provided the link in the description box. So if you haven't referred to that last video of gas solid separation, please do that because we discussed two systems, two prolific systems that are used in the industry for gas and solid separation, uh, namely the cyclone separators. We have uh, uh, discussed it about the uh, principle of uh, gas solid separation of uh, two different systems and the rest of the two systems are being discussed in this particular video where we are talking about the ESPs and the wet scrubbing system. So there are four basic methods of gas solid separation in an industry um, out of which we have already discussed about two of them uh, which is namely cyclone separator and back filters and we are going to discuss about the ESPs that is electrostatic precipitators and wet scrubbing system wet scrubbers which are very popular in the industry so you can refer to that video for the two uh, of the methods or uh, namely the cyclone separator and the back filters the rest of the two are going to be discussed in today's video so going straight away to the topic ESP working principle of ESP what is ESP electrostatic precipitators as the name suggests there is something there is something to do with electricity or electrostatic movement so let us understand this what happens in an electrostatic precipitator so basically the gas that is laden with solids the gas that is laden with solid particles these are the solid particles so gas plus solid enters into the system there is this structure wherein the gas enters and move up in the system so as the gas moves up what happens is there is this charging system charging system what does this charging system do the charging system basically ionizes the air that is present here now what do you mean by ionization ionization so it basically forms ions as it forms ions what type of ions does it form cations that is it positively ionizes the air thus there will be a release of electrons from the air particles so what happens is this air gets positively charged and releases electrons as you know a cation when it is formed it results in the release of electrons so basically there is a electric field established in the air itself which makes the air particles release electrons as the air particles release electrons they get ionized and the ions in a gaseous system cannot move but remain stagnant in a liquid or in an electrolyte the ionic movement is the one that creates the electricity to travel but in case of a gaseous system the ions remain stable what happens to the electrons the electrons in particular gets deposited on the solid particles the electrons released in the process of ionization by the electric field gets deposited on the solid particles that are laden in the gas and as the gas travels up as the gas travels up my friend there is this honeycomb like structure hexagonal honeycomb like structure through which these are multiple in series through which the gases pass and this honeycomb like structure basically has electrodes attached to the surface of its body inner surface of its body and as the gases after getting charged the electrons getting deposited on the solids these gases move through this honeycomb like structure wherein the body has the electrodes which are positively charged so they are positively charged they are cathodes they are cathodes in particular the cathodes the negatively charged solid particles which has electrons deposited on its surface gets attracted to the surfaces of the electrodes so what happens is the electrons deposit from the solid particles in the charging portion and in, then in the collecting section these are called the collectors collectors why are they called the collectors because the solids having a negatively uh, charged electron deposited on them 
gets attracted towards the positively charged cathodes or electrodes and hence are separated from the gas solid system and the pure gas exits this is pure gas pure gas from the honeycomb exit structure the fine particles generally cyclone separators are used to separate relatively larger particles whereas ESPs wet scrubbers back filters they are used to separate very fine solids in fact the two systems that we have talked about back filters and cyclone separators they have relatively for the larger particles and the two systems that we are talking about today are for the relatively finer finer particles fine particles are trapped in the system uh, by this method so you see this is an expensive method because of the continuous charge of of the electric field that needs to be maintained and also uh, the charge that needs to be maintained on the surface of the electrodes it's a continuous electrical consumption procedure and in a day you need to flush the system multiple times now what do, what do you mean by flushing flushing is basically as we did in the case of back filters reverse jet of air to scrap off the uh, dust particles that are separate uh, like, like, like collected on the surface similarly in case of ESPs electrostatic precipitators you need to purge out whatever is there collected on the electrodes otherwise fresh solid particles cannot uh, like uh, deposit on that surface because the charge will not be attracting the solid particles because there is already a layer of solids that is already present on this uh, electrode surfaces so what we do instead what we do instead my friends is we pass a water purging system water flushing which basically or air flushing which basically creates a pressure such that this solid particles gets dropped out gets washed out this is also a system that is followed in a gas liquid system gas liquid where the gas is in majority and liquid are present as droplets so then the electrons will get deposited on the droplets of water and the droplets of water are going to be attracted towards the positively charged electrodes in the honeycomb structure and fresh gas will come out this is used in our plant and is popularly known as the wet electrostatic precipitator the WESP wet electrostatic precipitator also popularly known in the industry as GP gas precipitator or wet gas precipitator WGP and uh, uh, DGP dry gas precipitator and wet gas precipitator so ESP is also popularly known as GP gas precipitator so we understand the principle of electrostatic precipitator I guess now we move on to the last topic of the day which is wet scrubbing we are going to discuss about that I hope you understand the flushing and the other mechanisms of the system talking of wet scrubber wet scrubber so as the name suggests there must be some wet wetting source there must be some source that wets your particles or scrubs out the dust or the solid particles from the dust laden gas now what happens is in a wet system there is a supply of water sprinkle of water now this is very popular practice in the industry you must have seen when you enter an industry there is a fountain like thing or sprinkler like thing uh, which sprinkles water throughout the um, uh, industrial surfaces in a fine summer uh, uh, morning or afternoon you will see the road vendors spraying water spraying water to settle down the dust in the air this is a common practice that is followed everywhere irrespective of an industry or outside wet scrubbing is basically a method where we this is a gas with solids laden on it and we basically sprinkle water spray water with small droplets which traps the solid wets it wets it and because of it the solids weight increases weight increases because the liquid droplets are deposited on the solid particles now and the solids and the liquid solids along with water settles down settles down my friends and the gas escapes this is a very very popular practice in the road vendors case in the industries where a sprinkle of water is distributed such that the uh, water droplets um, wetens 
wettens the surface of the solids, makes it heavier and settles down with the solids and the gas can move freely forward. But this is an inefficient method when it is done by hands or through a sprinkler even. So popularly in the industry, there is an equipment named Venturi scrubber, wet Venturi scrubber by which we popularly separate the gas and solid when it's about the finer solid particles. And what is its structure? What is its structure? Its structure is something like this, my friends. So what happens is, the gas laden with solids enters along with water at a very high pressure created by the pump this high pressure water when it faces this venturi that is a constriction the pressure energy primarily gets uh, like transferred into velocity energy or kinetic energy so the potential energy that was present in the water gets transferred into kinetic energy. Here, the potential energy decreases, the kinetic energy increases. As the kinetic energy increases, the randomness or the trying to escape the velocity increases at a constriction, at a constriction. And what it does is, it forms fine droplets, fine droplets of water, which basically the water that we are sending at high pressure in bulk is being atomized, atomized, atomized droplets of water basically takes off the solids, wettens the solids and deposits at the bottom. Where do we keep a reservoir? Solids plus water. We continuously pass this system by blowing it down, blowing down some portion of it and adding fresh water. To maintain the TDS or TSS, that is the solids deposition in the water. Fresh water, blow down. So we continuously blow down a part of it and replace it with fresh water such that the concentration of the solids in water is maintained. And we recirculate this particular water in the reservoir back into the system using this pump. This is a venturi scrubber. A venturi. Scrubber. Very popular practice in the industry. And this is the venturi that we are talking about. The constriction. In this venturi, the potential energy converts into kinetic energy. Atomization of the water droplets takes place and it takes off the solids with itself, deposits at the bottom in the reservoir, is recirculated in the system, continuous purging and fresh water inlet is done in the system such that the atomization, the energy basically drives out the solids from the system and the fresh gas exits. Now you might say that there might be a carryover, you have removed the solids effectively but there might be a carryover of liquid droplets along with the gas. Absolutely right. And that's why the venturi scrubber is generally followed by a cyclone separator which again rotates it in a circulatory motion, escapes the gas and deposits the water droplets. So basically Venturi scrubber wet scrubbing system is generally followed by a cyclone separator to ensure that the gas is free of water droplets. So first of all we remove the solids, then whatever water droplets are entrained with the gas we remove it in a cyclone separator. And this is the principle of a venturi scrubber or a wet scrubbing system. So you have understood the principle of electrostatic precipitators and you have understood the principle of wet scrubbing system. So you see that the gas solid or gas liquid separation are done by popularly four methods out of which are two we have discussed in the previous video, two we are discussing today and we have successfully done so. Hope this helps. Uh, if you liked it, like it, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon to get regular updates and uh, um, we will keep on bringing these technical topics for your convenience. Thank you very much.